Heads up, while most of my content is family friendly and suitable for all ages, Phoenix Wright Trials and Tribulations is a game that has been rated T by the ESRB rating system, and as such the videos in this Let's Play are likely to contain mild blood and or violence possibly at the same time. So viewer discretion is advised. The time of the murder. Just before it happened, I think I saw some red lights. You've said you did it before, but now you do! Three of them! I thought I'd ask for help, but just then I was splattered with blood! She wasn't dead, though. She struck back at the enemy behind her. Suddenly, the red lights went out, and the whole area went dark. Just at that moment, there was a horrible scream! Right after that, Dahlia collapsed and I lost consciousness. There was a horrible scream? Was it a manly man scream or a girly girl scream? <laughs> There's no in between. <laughs> 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 the Mavon Karma scream. <laughs> <laughs> These red lights. I thought you said you don't remember seeing them. I'm sorry. I thought I saw them, but then they disappeared all of a sudden. Ha. Fiends break trite, even the best of theories. Who was it that stabbed Misty Fay? It looks like you still can't prove it. Maya is telling the truth this time. I know it. The rest is up to me. Next time? Nope, we're doing no, this we're in doing one- We're thing. doing this All in right. one session, I'll break it up in editing. Okay. Well then, Mr. Wright, proceed with your final cross-examination of the witness. This is the last testimony. Supposedly. This is Phoenix Wright. <laughs> the real last testimony, part five. <laughs> <laughs> part five, yeah. <laughs> Really, truly the last testimony. Lights shining in the dark? I don't think you could make a mistake about that. Yeah, you're right. I think I saw them, but I can't say for certain. And I can't tell you for sure that they were for Mr. Godot's mask either. I don't get the feeling she's covering for him anymore, but... Cross harder. But just after that, you turned towards the lights and called for help. Isn't that because you thought the lights were coming from Mr. Godot's mask? Yeah. I guess so. Maybe that's what I was thinking at the time. But I can't remember. After all, there was a person I couldn't identify in front of me! Maya's life was in terrible danger at the time. There's no way she can remember the details of the scene perfectly. Yeah, you kind of block it out. Alright then, let's go on to the testimony. What did you do when you saw the red lights? Oh. Same vein. Oh, I'm, I'm... That's dumb. Sorry about that, oh, guys. <laughs> buh, buh, Thought I'd buh, ask for help, but then I was buh, splattered with blood. Buh, buh, buh. That blood. Was it Dahlia Hawthorne's blood? I think so. Probably. Just at that moment. I heard a soft scream that seemed to be close by. <laughs> Not the piercing scream, just like a... Ah! <gasps> I got stabbed! I got stabbed! How mildly that would, inconvenient! That would be Dahlia's <laughs> scream. Like, if she got stabbed, she'd just be like, Oh! Woe is me! And then we just like fall back dramatically. <laughs> it's a cow. Maybe, deed from maybe, Art uh, <laughs> wow. <laughs> maybe Pearl saw it. I hope she didn't. It was a woman's voice. So that was when the killer stabbed the victim from behind with the murder weapon. Is that right? Without a doubt, Maya was in the middle of a really dangerous situation. Anyway, the victim was stabbed by the murder weapon. What happened after that? She wasn't dead, she was struck. Maybe Godot back. just has like a girly scream. Ah! <laughs> so struck back? How do you know that? Well, you're right. I didn't see it exactly. But I could tell by the sounds of their breathing and movement. And also the smell of blood. You have witnessed more horror than any young lady should ever have to in yeah, her she's life. Yeah, she's been in what, three murder cases now? And got and then kidnapped. kidnapped. <laughs> So then, what did you do at that point? I... couldn't move. I could just barely make out their shadows moving in the dark, but... I had no idea what to do! Could you still see the red lights you mentioned earlier? Yes. I think so. But... Suddenly, the red lights went out! Kazam! Kazam! <laughs> they went out? Yeah. Suddenly, I couldn't see them at all. What could it mean? If the red lights were coming from Godot's mask, 
and they went out right in the middle of a fight. Maybe the mask was damaged. Or maybe it was knocked off. Or maybe the batteries ran out. Right, right. <laughs> <laughs> or maybe those little red pinhead looking lights just stopped working. What could have really happened then? I think it was like a... a uh, just at that moment, there was a horrible scream. Here's what I think happened. I think that this is like a Darth Vader mask type moment where the mask comes off. Or like Phantom of the Opera. And the mask comes off and it's like, ah, you're hideous underneath. Cause like, I just have very sensitive skin. No, but Anakin's <laughs> skin is like purple and disgusting. How? No, you remember? I haven't seen all of that movie. I saw like the first half and it was so boring. that I. You didn't see the sixth movie? It's the sixth movie. Darth Vader's mask comes off. I'm talking about Vader. Phantom of the Opera, Marty. <laughs> I've I, seen episode I, six. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, okay. I was talking I, about episode six. Anakin's mask comes off. He's not purple. He's purple. He's white. He's extremely he's like bleached white. Right. He's white and slightly purple. Because he is of not the, purple. <laughs> because not of, even a little bit. Because of the veins. It's like disgusting. Anyway. It's not purple. Okay. We're going to rewatch that movie sometime because I actually yes. haven't seen it in a while. That's part of why. Anyway. He's disgusting and his skin's deformed. He's got like scratches all over. And he's like, let me see you with my eyes. Like, Marty, I don't stupid. think you remember episode six. Like, yes, I do. You got the line right. But the way you're describing Vader without his mask is not at no, all he, what Vader He's got it, like, up to his nose-ish, and then the top half of him okay, is, like, you a dome. You literally don't remember this I at do, all. do! Are you confusing this with the episode 5 scene where you see him without the mask, where he no, actually no, is? No, that's no, that's the whole back of him. Yeah. That's the whole back. I'm talking about, like, above here, and then his head's just, like, this little weird dome with scratches all over his head. I don't remember. And then I don't also, think there's scratches on it. Anyway, and then in Phantom of the Opera, he, his mask comes off and he's also hideous. And like the girl's I like, like to think ah! that, I like to think that Phoenix and Godot are just debating this right now. Like, <laughs> Darth Vader's not perfect! Like, Mr. Wright, this is a court of law. <laughs> what do you mean by just at that moment? Do you mean the moment when the red lights went out? Yeah, that's right. The scream that you heard then, was it Dahlia Hawthorne? No, it was definitely Godot. I don't think so. I'm pretty sure it was a man's voice. What? What? Ah! That was Godot's scream. <laughs> so then, that scream came from the killer? That's gotta be it. Hmm, hmm, hmm. I think Dahlia Hawthorne must have taken the blade and attacked the killer with it. How is Godot alive? And then the killer let out a scream of pain, huh? After that, the killer stole the blade back and delivered the final blow! I guess. Well, Mr. Wright, it seemed to make sense to me. It sounds like a reasonable deduction, but I still kind of wonder. <laughs> that's about right! <laughs> <laughs> I think that's exactly how it happened. Of course. After all, my deductions are almost certainly always correct. Alright, let's go on with the testimony. The killer and the victim were fighting ferociously. What happened then? Let's go back. We'll go back later. Right after that, Dahlia that... collapsed. Dahlia collapsed. Dahlia. Dahlia. Daniel. <laughs> <laughs> Hosea. Joel. Habakkuk. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, wait, I skipped like Amos, Obadiah, <laughs> Jonah, Micah, and Nahum. Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, minor prophets. <laughs> minor prophets. And what about the killer that stabbed Dahlia? I'm sorry, I don't know. Really? It's true, Nick! I believe you. On this point, I'm sure Maya isn't lying. <laughs> you should add Apple's minor problem. We'll see. <laughs> ha! It appears that the darkness has proven to be your undoing, Trite. Hmm. I've got to use this testimony to prove that Godot committed the murder. I really wish I didn't have to do it. But for some reason, I get the feeling that some part of Godot actually wants me to. Which is why he's kind of been helping us out along the way. Right. I'm sorry to say this, but that interpretation would create an enormous contradiction. That makes sense. After all, my deductions are almost certainly never correct. Oh. <laughs> Remember the testimony she just gave before the killer let out a right. scream? Maya said she had already been splattered by the victim's blood. Also, she thought she heard a woman's voice. In other words, the blade in the staff had already been plunged into the victim. Ah! Uh, is that right? 
She couldn't have struck back with a sword that was already stuck in her body. The weapon that caused the killer to let out a scream must have been something other than the staff. It was Gdo's personal dagger. If you're so sure about that, then don't keep us waiting any longer. The part trite. that you hold looks like a coffee mug. <laughs> <laughs> There's only one thing I can think of that could have been used as the weapon here. If Dahlia Hawthorne had already been stabbed in the back by the staff, what could she have used to strike back at the killer? A clearly a hood. A hood. Obviously. Well, Your Honor, what do you think? To be honest with you, I feel like using my gavel to strike back at you right now. Huh? You're nothing but a joke. I knew you couldn't take it all the way. Ah! How could I mess up at a time like this? It's so obvious! You just spat on me. Spat on me! Dagger. Naturally, the dagger the killer brought to the scene of the crime. Oh, that's right! I forgot about that! This dagger was found at the crime scene, stuck into a pine tree. Yes, the detective found that this morning and brought it to me. Dahlia Hawthorne struck back at the killer with this. And she managed to wound him as well. Just because he let out a scream doesn't mean that he was wounded. For all we know, the blood on the dagger could have been from the victim. How about we actually get this blood tested fully? Have you forgotten that the blood has already been tested? Since we learned it wasn't the victim's blood, it must be the killer's blood. The killer must have a wound somewhere on his body. I refuse to have a body scan! <laughs> <laughs> so you're saying the blood on this dagger belongs to the killer? Exactly. A DNA analysis of the blood would prove it beyond a shadow of a doubt. And yes, Mr. Godot, it would prove that it's your blood. Nice theory, Trite. I mean, we actually should get a full scan on that blood. Order! Order in the court! Is this the end? Have I done it? Even he won't- even he won't be able to change the results of a scientific test. Yeah, but what if it's my blood? Ha. Huh. Let me ask you something, Trite. Let's just say that it turned out that I was the killer. Do you really think I would be stupid enough to leave evidence like that? What? Just think for a second. This dagger was found this morning by a detective and brought to me. There was already a bloodstain on it, correct? But even so, I was the one who brought this dagger here to the courtroom. Yes, what does that prove? Well, if I really were the killer, I could have washed the blood off and planted another person's blood on it. Yeah, because you just Th kill people. That's... It can't be! In any case, there's one thing I can guarantee, Trite. That blood, it doesn't belong to me. Not a chance. What?! Well, it can we to. test it anyways? <laughs> I just want to test it anyways. In any event, it seems to be established that the killer was wounded. Alright then, witness. Continue your testimony. Wait a minute! What's the problem? Um, I... I know I probably shouldn't say this, but... There's a big contradiction in Nick's explanation! M maya Th This dagger... You said that it wounded the killer. That's right. But... But, but... If Mr. Godot had really been cut with the dagger... His clothes should be bloody or have a rip in them, right? Because he wears the same clothes every single day? Um... Maya? Maybe he just changed his clothes! That had solved this contradiction pretty easily. What are you talking about? It's not that simple at all! Remember back to the day of the murder? Everyone that was on the Inner Temple side got trapped there. Ah, th that's right! And once the bridge was fixed and the police headed for the Inner Temple... Mr. Godot was already there waiting for them. <laughs> that's right. He never had a chance to change his clothes! He could have brought a spare pair ah! of clothes if he was hiding in the I store. I spilled coffee on them a lot. <laughs> <laughs> order, order in the court. What the witness says is true. Well, well, maybe he brought a change of clothes with him. Yeah. <laughs> but no one could have predicted the lightning strike that shut down the bridge. Why would anyone have brought a change of clothes? Godot is yeah. so prepared. Did the judge take smart pills during the last recess? <laughs> Well then, maybe the killer took off his clothes before he committed the murder. <laughs> That's why Maya knows it's a guy. <laughs> that way he wouldn't get any blood on them. 
That's impossible, Trite. You know how cold it gets up there late at night. Uh, After a few minutes with no clothes on, you'd be frozen solid. Ah! That's not the only problem! <laughs> <laughs> I don't go streaking, Troy. <laughs> Maya, in, the, in reality, Maya is just like, oh, I blocked this guy. Whole, no, Maya's like, I, bo I blocked this whole event out of my brain. <laughs> ha. So that's all you've got. I knew you weren't tough enough to finish this. We're so tough. Uh, right now, if Mia Faye were here. Shut up. If Mia Faye were here, she would have closed the book on this Whatever case already. Whatever, you know, you and Mia Faye sitting in a tree. <laughs> Ugh. If Mia Fey were here? How about we channel? So come on, Trite. Can you do it or not? No, actually, he said we couldn't channel people. He was like, how about you do it on your own, right? <laughs> how about it, Mr. Right? You've accused Mr. Godot of being the killer. But can you prove it? Have you got even one piece of evidence? Yes. We totally have one. Just The question isn't whether I can prove it or not. The fact is, I have to prove it. That's the only choice I have. Yep. I was taught that it's one of the rules of being a lawyer. Even if you look stupid. Especially if you look stupid. I can prove it. Let's do it. I'm going to bring your magnificent vengeance to fruition just as you want it. Ha. That's good. A fighter till the bitter end, Trite. Since there's just one piece of evidence that can prove your point, why don't we go for the unlimited <laughs> penalty? Nice! Are you trying to pressure me, Mr. Godot? Because it doesn't matter to me. I've got the one piece of evidence I need. G give me a break! You've got nothing, Trite! So what do I do at a time like this? It's simple. I've got to think outside the box and approach this from a different angle. Well, we just said the fruition... To gravely roast. We thing. did not. We, okay, we, we said used the word fruition. <laughs> <laughs> All right then, Mr. Wright. Let's hear what you've got. There's one thing I've demonstrated in the previous cross examination. The killer was wounded. That was proven by the blood on the dagger. But we decided it was impossible for him to have hidden such a wound. If he had been cut by a dagger, there should have been a blood stain on his clothing. There's one place. One place the killer could have hidden his wound. What did you say? Hidden? Ah, oh, yeah. I love how we have the old music back. This is it. My last stand. I need to think about this from a different angle. I don't need to think about why there was no blood stains on his clothing. I need to show how he hid the wound. It's the end of the line. The final stop, trite. Let's hear what you've got. Where's this location where you say the killer hid his wound? Where's the location? Do you know? Is it just his goggles? Here's the thing, if his goggles are pierced though, then he couldn't have seen where the blood or anything was, and then he would have probably died, according to him. Where is the location that he hid the wound? Was it in the snow? Did he like fall onto the snow and then just that, be like- how, No, and then the that, blood on his so body. He, somewhere oh, on, on his, his body, body? He, there's a wound. Where is the location on the wound on the body? On his face? It could be on his face, and then he put the mask back over it. So just his profile then? I don't know where... You think it's on his face? I guess. I don't know. Just try it. Ha. I don't know what you're talking about. And frankly, I don't need to know. What I do know is that you'll never be half the lawyer she was. Whatever. Isn't that right, Trite? What, what was that just now? Mia? It, you can't be. You're living on through him? Even as we speak, you're still hiding the wound. It's beneath your mask! Yeah, I was right. During the fight, the red lights given off by the killer suddenly disappeared. Seconds later, the killer let out a scream. That's right, your mask went flying off your face. Mr. Godot, would you mind removing your mask? If you have a dagger wound under there somewhere. Then I'd say this whole case is solved! I had a childhood injury! <laughs> oh boy. 
Ah! Did he just shoot a fireball? His like Combustion Man? Oh. Come on, dude. I want to see what you look like. Oh, she's crying. Great. He didn't take it off! <laughs> no, I refuse. Let me drink the coffee. Just now, I saw her spirit in you. I never liked you. Yeah, I know. Six years ago. I know you hate us. You helped the woman who put me into sleep by hiding her bottle of poison. We didn't know! And also, Phoenix was stupid! And then, while I was sleeping, you let Mia die. Okay, guess what? Wasn't our fault. But you didn't care. You just kept living your pathetic, happy-go-lucky life. We didn't care. It took us a while to get over the stupid <laughs> murder trial, and then she can talk to us, which is weird. You even had the nerve to follow in her footsteps as a lawyer. She was already training us! I can never forgive you. That's what I thought. Mr. Godot? But I was wrong about you. I knew it from the very beginning. The truth is, the only person I can never find it in my heart to forgive was you. Was me. Was me? <laughs> you? Yourself? I was the one that failed to protect Mia. Sure. Me and no one else. I tried to avert my eyes from the truth, to escape from the harshness of reality. I just couldn't face Mia's death head on, so I ran. Would you mind, like, actually finishing this up and taking off your mask, dude? I hid behind a mask. I threw away my true name. I couldn't even deal with being a defense attorney anymore, so I quit. But, 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 you saved Maya! Yeah, that was my plan. Up until just now, anyway. Wh what do you mean? Take it off, bro. Are you listening, Maya? If I had really wanted to save you, then there's one person that I should have gone to and talked to right away. Who would that be? Are you talking about Nick? But I didn't do it. I tried to get the help of Iris and your mother. But I closed my eyes to the most important man involved. Aww. Do you know why? The real reason? No. Why? I suppose... I wasn't really interested in saving you at all. Huh? I think I was just trying to salvage what's left of my own broken soul. I was trying to make up for the fact that I couldn't save Mia. Nothing more. That's why I let you walk right into a situation that I knew was dangerous. Forgive me. You, you're wrong! You put your life on the line to save Maya! No. Was it really for Maya's sake? Even I'm not really sure. W what do you mean by that? That night, in the darkness of the garden when I saw her silhouette... Part of me must have known the truth. The truth that it wasn't really Dahlia Hawthorne standing there in front of me. It could have been Misty Fay, or even that little girl. But I still picked up the blade. It was like I was dreaming. I'm not sure exactly what was going on in my mind at that point. Was I really motivated by the pure desire to protect Maya Fay? Or was it something else? Was it my hatred for a woman who had stolen everything from me six years earlier? Could it have been simply a desire for revenge? And now? I don't know anything anymore. I did learn something today, however. I finally realized that I was the arrogant one. Thanks! I was just... Chasing an illusion, a fantasy. Sure was. The stupid fantasy of defeating you in the courtroom. Indeed. <laughs> you just are like, yeah, you suck. Get out of here. <laughs> I want to see his, him without his mask. <laughs> you were the one who made me realize my folly. You never ran away from Mia's death. Instead, you picked up where she left off, as a true defender of the people. Yeah. In that one moment, I understood everything. Okay. Mr. Godot. I think you already know this, but if you don't, 
My name is Diego Armando. Yeah, we already proved that! Mr. Armando, I believe in you. I know you were trying to save me. What? Hmm. Thanks. Come on, please tell me this is not gonna be Your another- Your wound! It's bleeding! Ha. Huh. Did you forget already? In my world, the color red doesn't exist. These must be... my tears. Tears? Ever since I woke up from my coma, I think I've been waiting for this very moment. Mr. Armando! You'd do well to remember this, Maya. The only time a lawyer can cry is when it's all over. Come on. Take off your mask. We already know what he looks like without his mask. But I want to see him. It sounds terrible. I want to see him bloody. <laughs> that sounds I don't want to see his eye gorged out. True, I don't either. You just said you did. <laughs> I want to see. I just. I want to see him six years later and how he looks now. Because when you're in a coma, that does stuff to you. So. Well, we don't get to see that. This time, it really is all over, isn't it? Defendant? Yes, Your Honor. Although you weren't directly involved in the murder, tampering with the body and the crime scene is a serious offense in itself. I understand, Your Honor. Mr. Armando explained that to me very carefully. I knew the risk and I was willing to cooperate anyway. Very well. Before I hand down my verdict, is there anything you'd like to say? There's so many things I'd like to say. Well, there's one thing. I'd like to say something to Mr. Ray. I want to... I want to apologize to you. Apologize? To me? For what? For the case six years ago, of course. I just remembered. Weren't you poisoned by your own lover? Not exactly, but yeah, something like that. Even now, six years later, I can hardly believe it. She was going to do it. She was planning to kill me. It's not all that surprising. The two of you... You hardly knew each other. Huh? What do you mean? You and my sister. You only met twice. Huh? Wait a minute! Did- what, We only met twice? Did they swap in and out? <laughs> <laughs> the first time you met was on that faithful day. The day she poisoned Mr. Armando in the cafeteria of this very courthouse. The next time you met her was six months later. You met her again on the day that she stole your cold medicine. And Doug Swallow was killed. N n no way! I, it, just, it can't be true! <laughs> I mean, during our whole relationship, we were... For those six months, the woman that you thought was Dahlia Hawthorne wasn't actually my sister. Huh? It wasn't Dahlia? I wonder who it could be! <laughs> I hope one day you can forgive me, Feeny. You, you... You mean... That's right. I lied to you for six months. Oh, it's scandalous! scandalous. Oh. <laughs> but, but why? Why would you do such a thing? Ever since she gave you the bottle that day, my sister was trying to get it back as soon as she possibly could of the police investigation and their surveillance. She couldn't move about freely. So that's why you... My sister. From the beginning, she was prepared for the worst. P prepared for the worst? She thought that you might somehow discover the truth. That's why she was always ready to deal you with a moment's notice. Or deal, deal with... with <laughs> deal you? Deal you in. Deal me in, Dahlia. Deal I'm playing the Do <laughs> Extreme Poker game, too. Deal with... <laughs> All right, then she is... <laughs> <laughs> you mean she was ready to kill me, don't you? She already had so much to answer for. I didn't want any more sins on her soul. I begged her not to do it, and she agreed to give me a chance. What? And that's why you came to me? 
you came to get the bottle pendant back for oh, me. Oh, that's in her why place. she kept saying give it back. Mm -hmm. But I couldn't get you to give it back. I feel that something even as simple as that. Six months passed and I still couldn't get it back from you. Finally, my sister couldn't wait any longer. She didn't consult me about her plans for you that day. It was the first time that that had ever happened. That was a bit strange, wasn't it? Up until that day, you two were partners in crime, and she would confer with you. I think... she must have noticed. Noticed what? My feelings for you. If I... if I had found out she was planning to kill you, I would have done whatever was necessary to stop her. Even if it meant her life... or mine. Uh... Iris. After spending half a year by your side, my feelings toward you, they changed. I have something to say to you too. Yes? You really are the person I always thought you were. Even after Dahlia Hawthorne was found guilty, I still believed in you. <laughs> Even going back, where like at the end of the first case, he's like, I don't think that was really Dahlia. I think it was a fake. <laughs> it was, it was, he was right. <laughs> How many cups of darkness have I drank over the years? Even I don't know. <laughs> in midnight, in sunset, in cups of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that was good. I'll tell you though, right now, this one here is the greatest cup I think I've ever had. Yeah, because you're going to jail. <laughs> <laughs> Don't you think so? Phoenix right? You've never called us that! <laughs> yeah, I think you're right. <laughs> the purpose of this trial was to rule on the murder of the victim, Elise Donum. At some point, I expect you will be tried for your role as an accomplice in this case. I understand, Your Honor. Very well. On the charge of murder, I hereby find the defendant... NOT GUILTY! guilty! No confetti. No. <laughs> Court is now adjourned. The king she was like, she doesn't deserve confetti. <laughs> no. No way. No way. Well, February that was 10th, interesting. February 10th, 4.51 p.m. District Court Defendant Lobby number one. So I guess it's all over. The way everything ended. Was justice really served? The man who risked his life to save Maya is being sent to prison by my own hand. Of course justice was served. M Mia... I'm proud of you, Phoenix. Your defense was truly brilliant. But, but I couldn't save Mr. Armando, the man who cared so deeply for you. You're wrong, Phoenix. You did save Diego. You saved him in the only possible way. You mean, with that verdict? I think one day you'll understand too. Phoenix, I want you to remember one thing. You were as good out there today as any defense lawyer could ever hope to be. There's nothing more you can learn from me. M Mia! Oh! Okay. You've accomplished something that I wasn't able to. I owe you a great deal. Thank you. Mia. I'm sure we'll meet again someday, Phoenix. Bye, Mia. See ya, Mia. I've handled lots of cases and seen a lot of things. Seen some things. And all along this journey, I've found myself asking just one question. What does it really mean to defend someone? I suppose today's case produced one possible answer. Nick. M Maya. I guess it's just like my sis said. Your sister? Mia? That night when I channeled Mia to get advice on what to do... This is what she wrote back to me in my notebook. Don't worry. Phoenix will save everyone in the end. But... Come on! Cut it out with that gloomy face! Can't you see? Me, Sis, and I'm sure Iris too. We owe you for everything you've ever done for us, Nick! Maya, how? How can you be so bright and chipper after all that's happened? Yeah, and you're pretty low on health. You were brutally attacked. You even saw your own mother murdered. <laughs> Ouch! Fr Francisca! Yes! <laughs> Still as softy as always, Phoenix Wright. Hey, it's Excellent work, Wright. 
Huh? Mr. Edgeworth? When did you get back? She doesn't care about Francesca. Oh, who cares? <laughs> oh, that's right. I guess no one filled her in on that. Edgeworth and Francesca have actually been helping me. Helping you? If these two hadn't been here on the first day of the trial... Full plap. The defense wouldn't have gotten anywhere. Wow! But where were you, Nick? I heard he fell into a river and caught a nasty cold, which forced him to sleep all day. Yes, he laid in bed shivering with his fever, <laughs> from his fever with Iris's hood pulled over his head. It smells like <laughs> her! <laughs> <laughs> oh, ouch! Talk about embarrassing, Nick! You definitely need more training! Anyway, thank you, Mr. Edgeworth! And you too! Um, Francisca? I don't suppose... <laughs> There's room for me in this group hug, is there? Oh, Larry! What's with the, uh, longer-than-usual face? I realized something when I was reborn. I realized that Larry was never of any use to anyone, not even once! Th that's not true! Right, Nick? What? You're asking me? Well, Nick, is it true? I've got a place in this world, oh, this right? Oh, going to be the one. Uh huh? <laughs> oh, um, yeah, of course. I knew it. Everyone would be better off if I were gone for good. No, no, no. Um, I, oh yeah. Those portraits you painted, they were really good. Isn't that right, Edgeworth? What? M me? Why are you making that face, huh, Oh, well, um, yes, indeed. Uh, I certainly can't say that it's lacking resemblance. Do you really mean it? What about you, Francie? Did I draw you well, too? Ah! My beauty can't possibly be captured on by a mere crayon! Mm. Nonetheless, I, re I recognize the effort that you put into it, and that's worth something. So then you'll do it? Like you promised? You're going to model for my next picture book, Francie's Whiplash Splash! Ah! Don't get carried away! I want that picture book in my life. <laughs> yeah. Well, how about that? I guess painting portraits is the only thing I'm good at. The painting of Pearl was pretty darn good too, if you ask me. Huh? Now that you mention it, I haven't seen her around. Pearls. Where could she have gone? Normally she would have been made a beeline for Maya. Oh! I'll go look for her. Be right back! Hey, Pearly! Right. You seem to be uncharacteristically puzzled. I suspect you're wondering how Maya can be so cheerful despite all that has happened. Yeah. To be honest, I can't understand it either. Francisca. That's right. She lost her father fairly, fairly recently as well. I think I understand how she feels. Maya's a much wiser person than she appears, and I think she realizes something. Now is exactly the time when she needs to be as strong as she can. What do you mean by now is exactly the time? Maya wasn't the only one that was badly wounded by this incident. In fact, there was someone who was hurt far more deeply than she. I believe it's for that person that Maya's trying her best not to cry. Someone who is hurt more deeply than Maya. Edgeworth. I think I'm starting to understand, too. OW! Then tell me, Phoenix Wright! Who is Maya Faye being strong for? Well, it can't be for us, so probably for Pearl! Pearl Faye. The poor kid. After all, the reason that she worked so hard to follow the instructions was because she loved and believed in her mother, Morgan. Yeah. It's for the good of the Faye clan. I'm sure she believed in every last word. She thought she was doing it for Maya. That's why she was so happy. It shows how truly devoted she is to Maya. But it's a cruel irony that it was her exuberance that led to this tragedy. Maya Faye's mother was killed and Maya herself was put into the deepest peril imaginable. And that's exactly why Maya's putting on a brave face. She's doing it for Pearl's sake. Until she can see her smile again. Oh, hey. Oh, hey! So this is where you all were! Wow! Looks like we got quite the bunch here today! Youch! Wh what was that for, sir? Sorry about that, Scruffy. I think I was doing a little bit of a Muppet voice there. What was that for, oh, sir? Yeah. <laughs> My whip just seems to have a mind of its own. What's up, Detective Gumshoe? 
Oh, you know, this and that. Anyway, congrats on your win. Let's go out tonight, pal. Dinner's on me. My salary's just sort of kind of gone down by a teeny weeny bit, but it's all right. I made reservations at a first-class French what? restaurant tonight. <laughs> ah! Pretty good work, Scruffy. That whip was your reward. Um, Detective Gumshoe, you said a first-class French restaurant. You don't mean... Trabian! Where else? I knew it. We're doomed. <laughs> Come on! Let's go, everyone! Can't keep Maggie waiting, pal. Oh. Hey, you, crybaby! You're invited, too. Oh, forget about me. Pearl and I will be at the loser shack eating potatoes. You know, Maya's taken an awfully long time to get back. She's still out looking for pearls. Oh, Maya, what's wrong? Nick, what do I do? Pearly, I can't find her anywhere! Huh? I'll bet she just went back home. Th that's all. I thought so too, so I called the village. Yeah, you know, she ran during halfway through the trial on foot. No, we just saw her channeling Mia yeah, like I know, two seconds I know. ago. <laughs> but no one has heard from her. This has never happened before. As I figured, she's been badly hurt by this incident. She feels responsible for the tragedy that has befallen you, Maya. But, but, none of this was her fault. What, what should I do? Detective Gumshoe? Yeah, what is it, pal? Could you guys go on ahead? But, but what about you? Maya and I will. We'll join you guys once we find pearls. Nick! Don't worry about us, Detective Gumshoe. We may be a little late, but we'll definitely be there. We have a lot to celebrate to tonight, and I wouldn't miss it for the world. Yeah, but you're the- Ah! Very well, Phoenix Wright. We'll go on ahead. Don't keep us waiting, right? We won't. But, but where should we look? Where could Pearly have gone? Let's go, Maya. There's only one place I can think of that Pearls might have gone to. Yeah. February 10th, Hazakura Temple Main Gate. Hazakura Temple. For Pearls, I bet this is a very important place. After all, it's where this whole incident started. What's this? You're all back again so soon! Sister Bikini? I thought we'd be eating mashed potatoes alone tonight. So she's here? Pearlie's here? She's in the training hall. Why don't you hurry along and go see her? Okay. That's right, because Iris is in jail. Oh, yeah. Because she actually did get arrested yeah. for being in the complex. Pearlie's not here. Ah. Maya! The hanging scroll. Ah! Someone's cleaned it off. It's gotta be Pearls. How you clean gravy off? Ah! Mystic Maya! Early. Why? Why didn't you just leave us like that? Mystic Maya? Mystic Maya! I swore, I swore that I would never trouble the two of you ever again. Because it's all my fault that Mystic Maya's mother! That's why you came here? It's the least I could do to pray for your happiness. You don't have to do that, Pearly. It wasn't your fault. You didn't do anything wrong. I, I could see Pearl becoming a uh, nun here. I almost said a monk. <laughs> no, I can't see her being a monk. I could no. see her being a nun, though. Yeah. Of course, I'm sad that my mother's gone, but how do I say this? I, I'm i still happy. You don't have to lie just to make me feel better. No, really. It's true. The only reason I'm still here at all is thanks to everyone who was there for me. My sis, my mother, Mr. Armando, Nick... Glad I made the cut at the end, Maya. And you. If even one of you weren't there, I'm sure I would still be alive... I wouldn't still be alive right now. <laughs> I'm sure! <laughs> if one slip of the tongue, it could become a completely different game. If any of you were he weren't here, I would <laughs> that, totally that be alive. That would be our next Let's Play. Intent. <laughs> That's why I have to be strong. For all the people that were there for me when I needed them. That's all I can really do! But, Mystic Maya... I'm impressed. You truly are the daughter of Mystic Misty. I still love your bikini voice. Sister Bikini! Your mother, Miss Mystic Misty, was a strong woman indeed. I want to tell you what she said to me that night. After dishonoring the good name of Karain, I don't have the right to face my daughter. 
But still, Maya's always in my thoughts. It's true. She'll always be with me until the day I die. Well, that's ironic! Okay, well, I guess she's not with you anymore. Your spirit was with her. That's why your mother was so strong. Even at the end, I'm sure she had no regrets. She'll always be with me until the day I die, huh? There's a rule or something all masters are to follow, isn't there? To never take this charm off until the day you die. That's the master's talisman! The thing that Misty kept by her heart and would never take off. It wasn't the container that was important. Rather, it was the contents. That's... A photo? Ah! Oh! Mother. It's only natural for living creatures to fight to protect their own lives. But what makes us human is what, that we fight for each other's. But who do you fight for? How hard must you fight? So hard. That's the true measure of what human life is worth. We defense attorneys are warriors who are constantly challenged by that question. That's so cute! <laughs> Looks like I Pearls wasn't the first I person. I love right that so much. Was Maya the one who broke it or was Mia? I think it was, it was a group effort spearheaded by effort. myself. Ah! Maya's just freaking out that they broke this, the thing. And, like, Mia's like, it's fine. It's fine. Just, just break it. It'll be fine. And then their mom is taking a picture. Like, oh, this is this going to an album. album. Even when the battle is over and the bonds that connect us are severed, we always return time and time again. Mia, Maya, Pearls, Mr. Armando. His name's Diego, and he had a Nickelodeon show for kids. Go Diego, go Diego, go. So go good. Diego, do. <laughs> <laughs> and Maya's mother, too. I learned that from all of them. That's a great picture. That oh, is that's a fantastic so cute. picture. Well, shall we get going? Everyone's waiting. Uh. This is a day to remember, a day when a lot of fiends were finally put to rest. I think we should celebrate that we've overcome today. But, but I still can't... Oh, go on, sweetie. I can just eat mashed potatoes all by myself. <laughs> you can come back for training anytime. Um, okay. All right. I'm going to make a brand new start, too. Sister Bikini, I'll be back for more training, I promise. Do it in the summer. I know, and I won't go easy on you just because you're the future master. I'll make sure to prepare reservations for the three of you when you come back. <laughs> Alright. We're going to have a great feast today, Pearly. You know why? Because training is a battle of endurance. Okay, Mystic Maya. I... I'll eat lots and lots of food tonight. Um, you know, there's one thing I don't get. And probably don't want to, but... What is it, Nick? Reservations for training is fine and all. But why for free? Come on! What do you think? You're one of us, Nick. Next time, you can train right alongside us. Huh? I'll be waiting for you. Sister Bikini will take special care of you. Huh? Huh? It'll be great, Nick. We're going to do the special course, naturally. Huh? 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 That's a great idea! After all, Mr. Nick, you'd do anything for Mystic Maya, wouldn't you? Even walk on hot coals, right? We'll have a nice big meal before we come next time, right, Nick? You know, I was wondering if I could say just one little thing. Sure! Of course you can! Oh, I love this part! I can't wait to hear it! I'm getting goosebumps, too! Well then, here goes nothing. OBJECTION! <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Oh, that's a great game. Now what I want to see is I want to see somebody make, like, put the intro- Oh, we gotta read everything. I'll really have to work extra hard now. Master of Karain and the office manager of Wright and Company Law Offices, and I have to be a good big sis to Pearly and Nick, too. Well, as long as I'm not locked up or captured or something like that. We're gonna have to read everybody. This is gonna be terrible. Cause I'm gonna forget how to do everyone's voices and they'll be like, oh, Desiree sucks. Desiree always sucked. <laughs> so it's true, Mr. Nick really is Mystic Maya's knight in shining armor. He went through with the special course all the way to the end. Actually, I heard there's a legendary extra special ultra course here too. I think I'll surprise the two of them by making them a secret reservation. 
Thanks, Pearls. Thank you, Suichi Muramoto. Oh, you graphics. got it. Oh, boy. Maggie bought me a brand new coat as a present, pal! Please I date. feel ten years younger! I'll never take it off! Yeah, but somehow you don't seem the same. I guess a dirty, shabby old overcoat's just more detective-like, sir. Don't worry about it. In the name of love, a man will soil himself silly. Uh, uh bad word choice, uh, Yeah, detective. bad word choice. Kyoko Takeda. Chiaki Teramoto. Mr. Wright, I once again am in your debt. Thanks to you, the Treasures of Korean exhibit was a great success. I even got to see Miss Von Karma, who I hadn't seen in almost a year. She taught me how to use a whip, and said I must show you what I've learned. I thought she taught her how to use the whip, whip at the end of the second game. Well, it's the end of this one. Oh, Sweet! Okay. I'm glad they're hanging out. <laughs> I think Francesca needs that friend in America. She does. <laughs> oh no. Desi and I started a company called Mask to Mask Consulting. We're de dedicated to stopping the evil plans of all the criminals in the city. Our motto is cut it out, please! Pretty cute, huh? Well, we also sell plans to the criminals as a kind of side business. I wonder if that's okay. Sometimes I think maybe we're going <laughs> That's funny. <laughs> uh, oh, Yuki Kudo. Who's next? Oh. Mr. Ray, I want to thank you for exterminating Don Tiger. I returned the fifty or five hundred thousand dollars along with a tea set, a special thick tea, one I mixed with my own two hands. I bet he's drinking it now. Win through compromise. <laughs> <laughs> no, she's still creepy. Well, but it's kind of funny now. Now that she's not being, you know, in control of Don Tiger. Don <laughs> Yo's dude! I'm Zinniope. Oh boy. I'm just old and in the way! A wrinkly, grumpy, clown-nosed waste of flesh! At least that's what I thought. But my grandkids had a birthday party for me the other day. Talk about embarrassing. 69 years old and I cried like a baby with a dirty diaper. He's only 69? He looks so old. No offense. <laughs> Ouch. That's nice, his kids still care about him. As usual, we have an abundance of, abundance of work to do. We've hired a new programmer to replace El Glenn Elk. I do hope everyone will get along. His name is... Adam Manda. Adam Manda. As soon as I heard his name, I heard I knew our brain circuits would align perfectly. But mine didn't. I need to be <laughs> programmed the, Oh, I thought better. Adam Manda would talk too. I'm studying developers. I absolutely should have a new his, program. His name is a palindrome too. My, my, my. More reporters? Since the murder, we've made so much money, I hardly know what to do. I think the magazines like us because I provide such a nice visual, especially in spring. I can hardly wait for Iris to come back. <laughs> Iris ain't coming back. No way. You're here until you die. <laughs> okay, who's next? Nobody? There are at least two people left. <laughs> You've turned into such a re respectable man, Feeny. It was so sweet of you and everyone else to come and visit me here the other day. Of course, I was happy that you constantly had your eyes on me, but... I felt kind of bad when the little one slapped you so hard you got a nosebleed. <laughs> poor... poor Phoenix. Voice. Oh, yeah! Okay. Phoenix Wright by Ben Groman Judd. A plus, man! <laughs> oh, shucks. Talked over that. It's fine. Miles Edgeworth, Sean King. You have provided the legend for all these fangirls. Objection! Yeah, your objection's pretty good, Mia. Mia Fey, Christina Catano. You're a good voice actress, just not well suited for Mia. You're fine. Say. It's better than the objection! objection. You have a weird voice. Godot, James C. Wilson. Yeah. Objection. Yeah. Objection. Francisca. Janet Sue. You're so great. <laughs> I want you oh, back. Oh, I heard about. Objection! <laughs> <laughs> Winston Payne, David Chrysler. Objection! You have the best voice, sir. <laughs> <laughs> What's this? I'm back from a long and tiring vacation. No one's here to greet me? I guess while I was gone, my little whippersnapper buddy quit. No, I've got no one. And what kind of lonely, crazy security room is this supposed to be anyway? 
What's with all the flashing lights and switches? I feel like some sort of space alien. And now what am I going to do with all these macadamia nuts I brought back for everyone? If I bring them over to Edgy Poo, I know exactly these idiots is SLI. I can't accept these really, I'm afraid. And it's just painful for my friends tomorrow. I'll never find a gentleman who will treat me over the friendly. <laughs> a plus, that was a good take. <laughs> Old bag was Larry's boss. Yeah. <laughs> Trying to bring me macadamia nuts back for <laughs> Edgy Poo. I finally found something I love to do. Franzi's whiplash splash is going to turn the art world on its head. I should have realized it sooner. Self-centered, lazy, antisocial. I'm an artist. A really good portrait artist. I'm not a loser after all. Yeah, good for you, Larry. You'll figure it out one day. Small credits team. I think they're almost Shinji over at this Nakami. point. Well, yeah, that's the executive producer. Yeah. Oh, that's such a cute picture. Ah, oh, there's Francisco in the front. Yes. That's great. Who's on the other side? All the dead people. Well, and, and Guy in jail. Godot's, it's implied he's dead now. Is he dead now? Oh. I mean, the poison can't have done a whole lot of good to his Sure. Sciences. Okay, so he's dead. Oh, oh man. So, gotta ask, final impressions of the last case? I re- Okay. I really liked parts of it a lot. The- As soon as- Maya was up, and they were like, the trial's not over. That's where it started taking a turn for, like, the, are you kidding me? This is where it's going. Oh, really? I In my the opinion. Last the I liked the, the I liked it. It was just more like the, they're gonna pin, like, okay, they pin this on Godot. I guess I know that now. Would you have preferred it to be Larry instead, even though that makes no, no sense? No, I just thought it would be something else. I thought it would turn into the self-defense, and Maya would end up, like, going uh -oh. to jail for a couple years. But then they would come that would, and visit That wouldn't her. have been a good ending. It wouldn't have been like a happy ending, though. It would have been an okay ending, though, because that would give a reason as to why Phoenix Wright wouldn't be in later games. Oh, I see what you're That's saying. That's why I was, like, trying to think of a reason that that might be the case. But no, everyone's just so, happy. So, what would you say is your favorite case out of the first three games? Out of the first three games? Oh, my gosh. Just want to know. Um, and also, final pick, impressions Can I this. pick one for each game? Sure. Okay, first game, favorite case was probably... The edge were falling in the boat, uh, the boat water. <laughs> okay, one, good, that choice, one. good choice. Good choice. Second the game. <laughs> I, no, sadly, I'm gonna say the one that you hated, the Morgan drinking paint. I didn't hate it. I just didn't I really like. I had so much fun with that case, and also okay, for, I loved the second game because the Francisco was in it a mm -hmm. bunch. Then Third, favorite. this game. Oh. Are you gonna say it's recipe for turnabout? <laughs> it might be. You, I, wow, I, you like that more than the last case? No, I okay. Last case All is of so the bad. parts of the last case were super cool, but the only reason it was really good was because we had to sit through two cases of me being like, don't really know why we're doing this to make it really good. Yeah, it's you had got to the overarching You plot. had to endure that, that one fourth case. You had to endure that entire thing to get a really good final case, which I know it can be worth. But that it. that means the fourth case you don't like, and the fifth I case you hated do. the fourth case. But I would rather have like a fifth case. That's slightly less epic. That's slightly less epic. And a fourth case. That's and a fourth good. case that's a bit better. Okay, I, I respect guess, that. I guess. But taking the fifth Third, case by itself, would, wouldn't you say it's? Yeah, by by itself, I think it's cool how they connected everything. Yes, everything I, absolutely. in existence. I'm also glad Francisco was back. Do you like the second game more than the third game? Yeah, just because there were a couple cases I was like, I don't like this as much. And the second game, <laughs> were there any cases I didn't like in the second game? The first one, Phoenix loses his memory. Oh, that was annoying. But that, but that had Mr. Wellington loves large bananas. That is very true. That wasn't Highlight like a the, bad case. Highlight it was just series. more like the, wow, they did the very Did you like the amnesia. last one, the kidnapping case? Oh, that I was on the edge of my seat for. That one was That's kind of That one was what, good. Idea. But I was very much like, is this going to end? The only reason I knew it wasn't going to end badly was because they had the third game. Yeah. That is the only reason I knew that it wouldn't end terribly. I felt I like, like you weren't even taking it seriously until like the end of the second trial, though, where it's like, are you going to let him yeah, get that off was the hook? Yeah, so, that or... was so annoying. <laughs> but then also, like, me being able to predict the Matt on guard thing, I also liked um, mm -hmm. Adrian Andrews. Yeah, yeah, yeah. She's a good character. She's great. Okay, so yep. second game's your favorite. Do you like this more than the first? First game had the um, Larry Butts thinker. case. It had the thinker. The thinker it part two. The thinker part two. It's turn about samurai. It had samurai. Uh, it had Gordy. the boat case, and then, and then it had that insanely long rise from the ashes. Yeah, I know you really didn't like that case. It was too long. That was the problem. 
I, it's too long for what it wanted to accomplish. Considering I immediately was like, well, I think Gant's the person who did wrong. Because he stares. Because he stares creepy. Um, <laughs> I think I might like the first game more than this one, maybe. Wow. So the you reason, say this is your least favorite out of the, the original trilogy? is because the first game had the really epic thinker case with... I like that, that one. Is I liked that one with the bellboy. It had the really epic one with Lotta Heart and the photography that one is shoots epic. her gun to shoots her gun to the lake. But you also this really one, like the Samurai This one, one too. I loved the Travion case. It was hilarious. The first case with Mia with where it's like Phoenix. with Dopey Phoenix. I I was just the Wasn't whole that time, the best of the first cases though? Yeah. Yeah. It was the best of the first cases by far. Um, what was the other one? What was case two? It's Mask to Mask. Oh, yeah. Mask to Mask was great. Uh, you know what? Never mind. Third game is better than the first. Okay, thank you. I forgot about Mask to Mask. Okay, I, think yeah. I just yeah. think it's interesting because generally this game is basically unanimously agreed to be the best game in the series. Okay. And the second game is unanimously agreed to be one of the worst games really? in the series. Really? Which, I mean, I don't agree with. Really? I'm just saying I most people don't like the, the second, second game, game very much. Oh, also, if we go to oh, the yeah. final case now. It's Phoenix. Oh, that's kind of cool. Then it has, like, each profile. Full circle. Yeah, full circle. All okay. right. Well, this has been a super fun Let's Play. Thanks this for joining great. me, Marty. Yeah. We've done it's the been a first three games. And yep. just so you know, we have finished this game. We haven't. I haven't even started uploading the second game yet. Yep. <laughs> nice we timeline there. We haven't done... Yep. We're, go we're going to do more co-op Let's Plays in the future, hopefully. I know you're going to college pretty soon. Yeah. After this recording session. Yeah. We can hopefully find some time to do it. Um, yep. There, the there are more Ace Attorney games. This is the end of the Phoenix Wright trilogy, but yes. next up is Apollo Justice. I don't think that's going to be the next game. There's no, a, there's, there's another, another game. Th th don't, don't spoil it. I'll just say yeah. it's, a, it's a very good game, and it's a similar style. And in a way, you could say it's hauntingly beautiful. <laughs> Look forward to Look that. Look forward to it, I guess. Thanks for watching, especially those of you who have tuned in for this entire Let's Play series, we hope and you the liked other, it. If you've seen the other two, too, you get bonus points. Yeah, you get to be on Artie's Platinum Club, which has no benefit <laughs> at all, and it doesn't show up. But yep. just know, you're part of the Platinum you're, Club. You're, you're Bragging some, rights for You're our only. favorite deputy. people. <laughs> yeah, you're our favorite deputies, <laughs> Anyhow, guys. we have been recording for two and a half, almost three hours. Yeah, I know. So I can we need to it. finish this right now. Yep. Thanks for watching. Until we meet again for my future Let's Plays, my friends, have a great day, and God bless you wherever you are. Play these games, they're amazing. Bye.